All right, the next one we're looking at is going to be writing formulas with metals with multiple charges. So metals that have more than one charge, um, they're called transition metals. So they're the metals in the periodic table in the middle. If we look at our sheet, we know that all of this group, group 1 has plus 1, group 2 has plus 2, group 13 has plus 3, group 14 has plus 4. But the ones in the center here are positive, but we don't know what their charges are. They're not written because it changes. So copper, for example, can have a charge of plus one or plus two. So we can't just go off the number of the group here. Okay, so what we do instead is we have the numbers given to us as Roman numerals. So these symbols, these letters represent numbers. And this is an old way of showing before we had a system of numbers, we used letters. So this is the key that we're gonna use so basic rules, there can never be more than three of something in a row. So I is one, so we have one, one, one is two, one, one, one is three. And then we have five is three. So one before five, so literally one I before V, five, one before five is four, six is five and one. One after five is and that's the basic idea of this. All right, the only difference between this is this first part, we're going to write the charge of the cation using the Roman numeral, and then write the anion as one. So let's look at an example of this. Okay, iron three chloride. So iron, all of these elements are going to be a little bit weird because um, chloride, you know, is, is chlorine. So we can use the Cl symbol. Um, but iron, if you look at iron, iron is going to be element Fe. So this is the Latin root. So, um, and it's the same ferrous in French and in Spanish. So that's where we're getting these roots from. Okay, so if we're looking at this, I'm telling you this is iron 3. So this is 3. So we're saying that the charge of this is 3. So we're using the Roman numeral to find charge. All right, uh, chloride, Cl, is going to be, again, minus 1. So we're going to say that Cl is going to be 1 minus. All right, let me circle these, switch these around, and then we're just doing the same thing that we did before. Fe, the 1 comes down here. Cl, the 3 comes down here. So we get Fe1, Cl3, or Fe, Cl3. So when we remove ones. Okay. Our next one that we're going to look at is lead oxide. So this is one before five or lead four oxide. Attention, PSA students, the PSA building at this time. Yes, yeah. PSA building. Students, first with PSA building at this time. All right, so to find this one, sorry about that, uh, we have lead four oxide. So the four is going to be our chart, four plus. And oxide is oxygen. So if we look at our oxide, oxygen is going to have a charge of minus two. So here we're going to do our crisscross method again. So we get PB, the two comes down here. Our O, the four is going to come down here. So we get PB2O4. So this would become PB oh, when we reduce. Both can be divided by 2. So we can reduce this. We're going to reduce. So we always want the smallest number possible for each of these. So a 2 and a 4 is the same as a 1 and a 2. So we get PB1, O2, or PB. So that would be our correct answer after we remove one. 
All right, um, last one we're going to look at, we're going to have chromium-6 nitride. So again, this number here, 5, 1. So 1 after 5 is 6. It's like 1 before 5 was 4. So we're going to end up with our symbols. So chromium is going to be element CR, 6 plus. Nitride is nitrogen. So if we look at our nitride, nitrogen is going to be a charge of 3 minus. So we're going to have 3 minus this. All right, so then we'll do our crisscross method. So we should get CR3 and 6. 3 comes down, 6 comes down. And so like we saw before, this is 2 and 4, this is 3 and 6. We can reduce. So we're going to divide by 3. So this would be CR1 and 2. Or we can just say it's CRN2. And that's it.